Yo, yo, what's going on, yo? This is Vitamin the Governor, and you are here at Talking Rock. We've been in the borough of Brooklyn a little bit, and we had to go uptown and get some information from one of the pioneers right here. Today we are here with Frank. Frank Rojas. Frank Rojas. Yes. How's everything, Frank? Everything's good, Vitamin. Um, we've had a pretty tumultuous past couple of months, so right. first and foremost, uh, tell the people how's everything going with you, how's everything with you, just in general. Everything's good, you know, um, pretty much just follow the direction that they give us. You know, I don't I don't question stuff. I just, you know, do what's in front of me. Um, it's also sort of like forced me to be a little bit more creative than usual. Okay. Um, so in this time, I've developed a, a rock dance series that's been going for like 16 weeks from that. I put together an online rock dance series. So uh -huh. we went, we filmed like 21 episodes, All right? So it's about 21 steps, and we're gonna release it probably around September 21st. Um, and it's teaching the rock dance, the original rock dance from the beginning, step-by-step -step methodical approach, right? Um, and then from that, you know, I realized, you know, some of the, some of the students I had were a little older, and they said, they lost weight, you know, doing this series. Nice, nice. I went from 188 to 165. So I figured this is, you know, this is also a fitness program. So I put together a rock dance fitness program where I using, I'm using the rock dance to get people in shape, you know, tone, get their body right, get their spirit right. So I launched that also the 21st. Nice. So again, you know, the pandemic has, um, you know, made me, you know, be a little bit more creative than usual. Nice, spark some creativity. Yes, sir. Nice. The original rock dance. But we're going to get more into that a little later. Yeah. Uh, I like to go to the beginning. Where did you grow up? Um, so I was born and raised in the Bronx, um, Prospect Avenue, 182nd. That's like two blocks away from the Bronx Zoo. Um, yeah, you know, i um, Born and raised in that neighborhood, you know, you know, in the middle of the hood, you know, yeah. we had, we had gangs, we had drugs. Uh, it was, it was a, 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 the beauty of it was that it was a black and Puerto Rican community, you mm -hmm. know. So you had, you know, on my block, I lived in the middle, and on my left was, you know, mostly Puerto Rican, and on my right, on the same block, right, was the black community. So I had, you know, I had the distinct pleasure. Um, and pretty much the honor to be brought up, you know, with both cultures, nice. um, which influenced me as a person, right? N not just me as a dancer, because, you know, that's where it all started, yeah. um, right on that neighborhood. So I was, I was around 11 years old when my, my dad was murdered. Wow. Um, and, and even prior to that, I come from a family, you know, who, you know, they dance salsa, you know, merengue, you know, it was a party in my house every, every weekend. So I grew up, you know, with, with, with that flavor. Um, mm -hmm. I grew up partying. So did you grow up, like, from the, as far as you can remember, did you grow up dancing? Yeah, yeah, you know, so everybody danced in my house, you know, it was more, more salsa, right, merengue, you know, cha-cha. Um, and I dug it, and it was in my DNA. I did it, but I liked what the brothers were doing down the block a lot more. You and, know? And, the, and so, like, coming out of your house and just uh, existing in your neighborhood, what did you see from those brothers down the block that Right, that, that attracted me. Um, it was the groove, right? So, you know, we're talking about, you know, 67, 68, 69, right? So... You know, you, you, at that time, you, you, you there was always a new dance. Like when a song came out, there was a dance that went to the song. Mm, okay. So like as far back as I could remember. So even, even in, in, in my house, right, the, it, was, it, was, it was salsa, but the, uh, the Hispanic community came up with an English version of salsa, which they called the Latin Bugaloo. So that's the first, like, American way of dancing for me, okay. right? So the Latin Boogaloo, the first dance I learned was called the African Twist, right? So, and that, that was a song by Eddie Palmetti, all right? So then after that, you know, I mean, I was a good dancer. I could move. So everywhere I went, they, you know, come on, pop, get down, right? So my, my nickname is Papo. That's what they call me on the street. Um, so... 
the, the, I remember the first dance I learned was the tighten up, Archie Bell and the Drells, mm. right? There was the tighten up. I remember the mother popcorn, the right? Mother popcorn. The mother popcorn, James Brown, there was a dance called the mother popcorn. Mm. That's where all my groove came from. And who, who was making these dances up? Were they just being created were, out of fun from yeah, the community? Yeah, yeah, from the or? community. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Every time a song came out, you know, it made your body do something different. And I don't know who was creating yeah. the dances, like, like the but they dance. showed up in my house. Okay. See, the, the other thing that, that's important for me, so when my father was murdered, you know, my mom's went, you know, a little, you know, oh, you yeah. could imagine, yeah. right? Yeah. She had four kids. It was a tough time for her. So she started partying a little bit, right? She needed to remove herself from her pain. So she started going to clubs and, and you know, the thing is when she, part, she went to clubs, she had the girls who lived up the block from us mm -hmm. babysit, right? They were teenagers. Okay. Right? There was a whole group of them. Okay. All right? So my mother went out. As soon as she left, you know, my father, he was big into music, so we had a beautiful sound system. Right? We had a beautiful turntable, two big speakers. That's how you did it back in the days. You only had one, one turntable. Um, so when my mother would leave, the girls would wait a half hour, an hour. Party time. Party time. Uh -huh. They called all the brothers from the hood. In, in my house. Crib? In my crib. They changed the light bulbs. They would turn them red, black, and they would party. Wow. They would party. They would dance. You know, my mother wouldn't get home till 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, maybe even later than that. And, you know, they dance all night. They probably left, you know, yeah. she's coming, she's coming, yeah, yeah, yeah. all the way to the last minute. So, and, you know, so me and my brothers, we would just sit and watch. You know, every now and then the girls would pull us out, you know, we dance. I, you know, I would watch, you know, I, I mean, intently because I love to dance. Mm -hmm. So that's where I learned how to first dance, really with the groove. Uh, that's where my groove came from. So th that's when... They did the tighten up. The mother popcorn was probably the main dance for me because that had like a flavor that I use today. And that's from a James Brown song. It has James that Brown, bro. That's yeah. right. So and then and then we had the Good Foot, right? The song Good Foot. There was yeah. a dance called the Good Foot. Mm -hmm. You remember Scorpio? Yeah, yeah. There was a dance called the Scorpio. ABC. The song Michael Jackson. Yeah, we had a song yeah. ABC. I still do it. I call it the Melrose Funk right now. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Every time a song came out, I forget, we did the click clack. I don't know what song that was too, but it didn't, it, you know, you didn't always name it the song, but it always was a song that, that you know, dictated sparked, the yeah. movement, sparked, nice. perfect word, sparked the movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So who made it up? I don't know, but yeah, I know it, know, it, just, it, it just showed you know, up. <laughs> when you say that, you know, it's so interesting, you know, working with youth and stuff like that, and you've done youth work, it's almost the same today. A, a song comes out, sparks a dance that's created by the youth. The movement. And everyone starts doing the, the, the movement. Absolutely. The dance, and the dance goes to the song. To the song. Wow. Always. Like, always. So that's why, you know, when I teach, I always say, you can't dance, really, unless you're going to connect with the music. It is so important, right? Because that's what allows you to develop as a dancer. You know, as soon as you connect with the music, bang, a lot of good things happen. Word. So you're growing up in a household, and now it's a single-parent household. Right. But still, there's a lot of musical influence, dance influence from the community, and even you saying they're throwing parties right in your house. Right, right. So, what what is your progression as a dancer go from there as a youth? Do you start now venturing out more into your okay, neighborhood? Okay, so so yeah, that's exactly what happened. So I was also an athlete, right, which connected me to you know other people in the neighborhood. I played basketball and I really played a lot of baseball. But baseball became kind of painful for me because my father was my coach. He taught me everything about baseball. Wow, okay. So when he passed, you know, baseball became like That's hard for game. me. And I didn't even know it. I just knew that I wasn't showing up to games. You know, I'd rather hang out than show up to games. And I'd be in the park playing basketball, mm. right? And when we played basketball, they played music, right? And we danced. So that's where, like you know... Court, during the games and all no, that? No, no, afterwards, just, okay, yeah, you just, chill, you hang, yeah, everybody, yeah. so you, you join the other group that's dancing, okay, right? Put the ball down. Right, over and here. I could always dance. So anytime I stopped playing, come on, pop, come on, pop, you know, I yeah. would always get down. I knew the dancers. Um, so what happened was, so that was I, was, I was like an eighth grader at the time. Um, so when I went to high school, I, I met people who were like... Not necessarily going to clubs yet, right? So what they what they had at that time was hooky parties, 
Okay. Right? But these hooky parties were in basements. And if they were in somebody's apartment, again, you had the lights and these dudes play some vicious music. Mm. Right? And they and they were mixing at that time, right? Because that's, you know, and we'll talk about that, yeah. you know, a little later on. But they were mixing the music. And this music that I heard at these places, you, you would never hear them on the radio. So it was like... You know, it was like, wow. Yeah. So I, I, I really felt that music. So I, again, you know, for a while, I used to go to these hooky parties and just watch, right? I was too scared because these brothers could dance and these sisters, they were awesome. There was, it was like nothing I ever saw before. It wasn't the same stuff we did in the neighborhood, yeah. right? So, and this was more like the Puerto Rican community now. These parties, I went to these hooky parties and I was at one. And, and this dude, his name is Puppet. You know, he was a great dancer. He was one of the better dancers there. Puppet. Puppet. His okay. name was Puppet. He came up to me. He said, you know, you've been coming, but you don't want to dance. What's up? I said, he said, you know how to dance? I said, yeah. So he, you know, he got me to come out of myself a little bit. And I danced. And he said, yo, try this. I got it on the spot. He said, do this. Got it on the spot. He said, all right, meet me later tonight. This was on a Friday, right? So from there we went, he took me to my first club, which was in the Bronx. It was called oh, The Joint. I took you straight to the club for me. Yeah, it was The Joint. And let me tell you something. There was nobody there. The shit was empty. <laughs> it was empty, yeah. right? But we danced. Yeah. You know, the music was beautiful. Yeah. Sometimes you know? I like it empty. You get more space Man, yourself. we danced and he started showing me more, you know, and he saw that I could pick it up. So he said, all right, you know, you're, you're ready. I'm going to take you downtown. I'm going to take you to the fresh. Oh, so, right. so this guy was like your first mentor. Yes, that kind of showed absolutely. You he showed me. He introduced me to the world of dance. And you said that when you went to these hooky parties, you was hearing music like, whoa, like out of this world. Yeah, Can you songs that I never. Songs yeah, that, yeah, that Just you, Begun, yeah. you know, Listen to Me. Well, I didn't hear Listen to Me yet, okay. right? Listen to Me, I, I, remember, I remember distinctly I heard Listen to Me at this club called The Footsteps. And that shit drove me crazy. I was like, wow. So it was just begun. It was this song called Area Code uh, to something, I don't know, 615, which was, you know, like a hard beat. You know, you had Give It Up and Turn It Loose, the regular rock songs, yeah, you yeah. know. Life and Death was the first time I heard it at a, at a hooky gig. Mm -hmm. And then they had so softer songs yeah. that were rock. But so, so I heard, you know, songs like I'll Bake Me a Man. Um, Barbara Mackman, you might want to check that out. Okay. You know, it's awesome, bro. It's, it's a beautiful song, but it's a softer song, right? That most of the times, you know, it's like you didn't get down, like it wasn't competing. It was more to be cool. Just the groove and chill. It was the groove. That's, that's the thing, though. We lived to be cool. Mm, you know, yeah. that's what, that's, that was all of it for us, to be cool. So, you know, songs like that, um, it's a shame. Um, O.C. Smith, La La P song. Okay. These are songs that, you know, that had more of a, of a flair to it, right? They were a little softer. So those are, dance, those, are, those, are, those are songs that we danced with girls, right? So most of the time when you competed and you know, dancing hard stuff like Just Begun, you got with your partner. You know, it was a harder song. So, um, and most of the times, partner, you know, you partner up with a guy, you know, you know, very, very, you know, very few people dance guy, girl, when it was time to compete. And like, the girls dance with the yeah. girls. And in that, that um, time period, how did you compete? Did you go one <clears throat> after another? Did you actually contest each other simultaneously? Yeah, so, so, and again, that's a little bit further down. Okay. All right, because it was, it was, at, it was when I went downtown, the fresh, was when I started to see the dance contest, right? Wow, okay. The footsteps. So, but the dance contest, that's what it was. That's how you competed for the most part, was a dance contest. And the way they did it was you get to the middle of the floor, like if it was 20 people with partners or, you know, 10, whatever, you get to the middle of the floor. You know that yellow tape, like when somebody dies? Yeah, caution that, tape. That's what they did. They okay. were the caution tape. Um, a lot of times it'd be a bouncer on a big ladder and the owner on the other ladder. I mean, they didn't know much about dancing, but they, were, the they ended up being the judges. <laughs> right, right, right. So, and, so that's how the dance contest went. You know, however, when you got down, if you were real good, there was always a circle. And people used to come from all over the place because, you know, we had guys who were known, right? So when I first went out, I remember Puppet was the one who said, you got, I'm going to take you to the fresh. I want you to see, he said, Paulie first, right? Paulie. His name was Paulie. And then he said, rubber band. 
All right. He said, I like rubber band, but Paulie's a different dancer. You might like Paulie because he saw that I was more of a dancer. So Puppet did splits. You know, he, you know, he did a lot of floor stuff, um, whereas I just liked, I liked footwork. And, I, and, and again, I grew up with groove, so I had groove. So he, so he said, you know, those are, are the two best dancers. So when I went to the Fresh, Paulie, I never got to see Paulie. I don't know what happened to Paulie. Yeah. But I had heard about him, and so I he still was, hear about him to this day. Bro. So he was like a like a like a myth, like an urban legend. Yeah, he had disappeared again. You know, you were there and you wasn't. A lot of brothers used to get busted. You know, mm -hmm. there was the drugs back then. So I don't know. It's you know, I, I can't speak on what happened to Paulie, but he wasn't there. But I got to see Rubber Band that night. Okay. You know, Rubber Band is a legend, right? Living yeah. legend. So I remember when I saw Rubber Band, I said, mm, okay. But then I got to see in that same circle. It was rubber band, Mexico was dancing, right? Mexico. Mexico. They, they danced together a lot because they were okay. similar. So, but then there was these other two dudes, right? In that circle, it was Didi, he was from the Bronx, and Louis, tall Louis. Um, I'm not sure if he was Puerto Rican, Dominican. He was black, but he spoke perfect Spanish. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, you know? But he was nasty. Okay. He was from Brooklyn. So you had Louis, who they said was the best. Right, so you had in, in the in, in the boroughs they talked about rubber band, but you when you went to the mecca, you know, in Manhattan, they said it was Louis, and Louis's partner was Didi, and Didi was from the Bronx, so I got to see him. I would become friends with Didi later on, but again, I was young, I was 13 years old, I was very impressionable, I was freaking intimidated. I mean, I was scared shit being in this place and, and being here and witnessing. Uh, Rubber Band and Paulie and and and, and all of these people. I mean, not Paulie. I'm sorry. But, he but, participated. Right, but Louis, Louis, Didi, and all these people. Yeah. Just as a spectator, what were you seeing them do? Can you describe it? Yeah, of course. So, so Rubber Band and Mexico. Again, they were more like spectacular dudes, right? Everybody used to when when, when Rubber Band did a split because nobody really danced like that. You know, when he did a split, people were like, oh, oh, um, Mexico would do the helicopter, I think yeah, they call like it, pinwheels, right? A helicopter. Yeah, yeah, he did, he did that, right? So people, whoa. But Didi and Louis, they did a lot of footwork, they spun, they dropped, you know, they danced. And that's, for some reason, that's what I was attracted to. So there was two kinds of rock, right? There was what Rubber Band did, and there was several people who danced like that. Right, but then there was like Louis, Didi. Now that same night, though, there was another circle <laughs> taking place, and that that circle, everybody went from this circle to that circle, right? And it was Johnny and Hector, two dudes. They were like five foot five, short brothers. Man, they dance. They were like speedsters, right? They were like doing everything quick. They dropped. They had footwork. They had they had everything. These dudes were monsters. And those are the dudes that I first fell in love with and said, this is what I'm going, you know, this is what I'm going to learn. This is who I want to be like. And what's the, like, the time frame of you going to the Fresh? The Fresh was 72. Ooh. I think it was late 72. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so I started dancing in 71, but I got to where everybody, you know, because Manhattan, these clubs, the Fresh, they also, at the same time, there was another place called the Contiki. And they were a little bit older in the Contiki. Although Louis, Didi, and Rubber Band were like 17, 18, they were considered older. They still hung out in the Fresh. But there was another group who was rock dancers. They hung out in the Contiki. The reason why they hung out in the Contiki was because Alfie, the baddest DJ in those days, the best mm -hmm. ever, you know, played at the Contiki. So, but I was attracted to the Fresh. Um, I liked the energy. You know, I like the way they dance in the fresh way more. So, um, so yeah, it was late 72. So I think Johnny and Hector were probably top dogs. Johnny and Hector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Louis, people, you know, it's, it, there was like so many great dancers that one weekend it was Dee Dee and Louis, right? The next weekend, Johnny and Hector would get the best of them. So those were the guys that I was attracted to. I loved the way they, they dropped. Um, and how they incorporated the drop. So, you know, I didn't dance that night. You know, I saw it all. I yeah. went home and just practiced, wow. practiced, practiced. And at that time, like from from what you uh, experienced, did they call themselves rock? Yes, yeah, yeah, it was rock. Yeah, what are oh. you doing? It's rock. 
Yeah, yeah. like like puppets say, yo, you got to learn rock. You know, he says, you can move. You got to learn rock. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the rock. They just, you got to learn rock. rock. Yeah, nice. that's it. You know, never asked why they called it. Or <laughs> none of that, yeah, you know. Just did you just, you yeah. just went and did, yeah, it. did it. So the, the other thing about that night, you know, that, that turned into like six years, I used to party definitely six nights a week, sometimes seven. Wow. I was in these clubs. Absolutely. That was, it was my life, right? Enoch, you know, most of these guys that I hung with, you know, it was it was our life. Six nights. So how yeah. you wake up, man, to keep going. Well, man. yeah, well, we would get home about six in the morning to go to sleep, to get up, to go to school. But we never, my mother would get us up, leave to go to work, and we go back to sleep. Wow. So we became yeah. truant, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, school wasn't a, a deal for us. We yeah. really, we found something that we loved and we committed to it. So the other piece to that, though, even that night, you know, I saw, you know, female dancers who were just off the chart. You know, it was another dancer named Anna. She danced with Janet. She was amazing. And she influenced me a lot. Enoch would say she was his biggest influence. Um, her brother George was a, another great dancer who took me under his wing. See, so after Puppet, Puppet left. You know, Puppet was a little yeah, older. older yeah. He was older than he had to get his life together. Exactly. So, so he moved to Jersey. Um, and then so George took, you know, took us under his wing. It was a group of us. It became a group of us. And we just hung and had a lot of fun and, and, and just danced. We would practice every day for about four hours and then go dance, you know, all night long. Um, and we all, y'all danced, y'all went to the clubs. Um, you, you experienced music in all these different venues. Mm -hmm. Were there like major, besides the competition you spoke, were there any major competitions at that time that you partook in? Yeah, the, the clubs, right? Because that's... Oh, so the, within no, the, the club nights, oh, oh, yeah, they always yeah. had... Oh, they had competitions, right? Like once a weekend, sometimes mm -hmm. twice a weekend, because again, this was... So let me just go back a little bit, right? So, you, you know, when, when, when I was doing those dances to those songs, right? The, 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 it was the black community that pretty much was the power of dance, right? But then you had the Puerto Ricans who came in, did what the black community did, because we loved it. You know, we did the groove just as good. We had the soul. We had soul, right? Yeah. So, but we also had that salsa. Mm -hmm. We had the cha-cha. Mambo. All, of, all that. of that. So we put that together, and we became the power. The power shifted. And it was the Puerto Rican community. And, and in those clubs, the Fresh, the Contiki, the Footsteps. And there was clubs before that, right? So there was the Forbidden Fruit, Ooh, okay. right? There was the Ruby Fool. There was the Pegasus. There was the Zoo. There was the Fudge Factory. There was the Sanctuary, who everybody will say was the best, the biggest. The I just, the Sanctuary. I just missed the Sanctuary. Sanctuary was that kid, Sonny Grasso, who I had told you about earlier who was one of the DJs that found mixing. Mm -hmm. And if you look him up in Wikipedia, they got a whole lot of stuff on. Sonny Grasso was yeah. considered the pioneer look that up. Sonny of Grasso. DJs. Look that Sonny up. Grasso, yeah, yeah. Although Alfie was better than Sonny. Sonny just got all the, you know, he got the credit, you know, but Alfie was, was really the man. And wherever Alfie went, you know, the crowd went. So this was, you know, the Puerto Rican community. It was mostly, you know, it was, there was, you know, there was, it, it was, Somewhat diverse, but it was mainly Puerto Ricans that were in these clubs. Um, and these club owners, it was the Jewish mob, right? Wow. So they took it, you know, they're the ones who saw what we brought to the table and they followed us. With, and, and everything they did was based on us so because gave, we were geared, their audience. They geared it towards you. We were, right, right. So they used to charge like $10, $20 to get in these places. That was a lot of money back then. Of course. Then. Some people don't even want to pay that today. Right, right. So, yeah, but, but, but you could imagine back then, but those clubs were so sophisticated. That it was worth every penny. It was, it was worth every penny. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. And, you know, and most of us, well, I, I used to get in free, you know, because I was, you know, one of the better dancers. So I attracted, you know, people. People used to come from all over to watch me and my brother Enoch. Me and my wow. partner Enoch, they used to come all over, you know, just to watch us dance. And out of that collective that you had, that you built, and you guys went to clubs together, did you formally form a crew with them? Or no, was it just like, it, we were just boys, yeah. Just but but we were, I mean, if you go, you know, if I look at what you guys do today with the crews and stuff, we were a crew, but we never labeled it. Um, we were just boys. Or wore a certain sweater. We were just boys. The girls used to call, my group was the little men. Because my, my group, we were, 
we were we, we learned to be sophisticated really early, you know. Yeah, Thirteen going to clubs. Yeah, and yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. So, but but we picked up on those nuances, you know, that cool flow I'm telling you yeah, about. Yeah. We picked up on that, right? We dressed. We used to shoplift. We used to go to Macy's, Gimbel's, these big ass stores, right? And we used to sh- we we made sure. So our our attire was very much part of. You know um, the the the, uh, the whole experience. It was. Yeah. I mean, we dressed. I used to go out with a different outfit every every night. Wow. So you could imagine, I chopped it. I a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the closet was crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you spend all these this time in the clubs. You know, um, you're going there, you're going here. You're experiencing. You're, you're performing. Right. So so there where wasn't. Do you, where do you progress in terms of of the as a dancer and the rock? dance at that time good question man you're going into the 70s 71 72 73 does does what else is going on in the city that okay. eventually intersects or okay do, do that's intersect? that, that's a great question right so that's why i call us the disappearance of a generation because there wasn't much opportunity for us mm. so there was a, a dance group that could have been the first street style dance group you know, ever put together called the Latin Symbolics. Okay. All right. Me and Enoch were originals, right? So there was there was four. There was six of them, but four for the most part because they did. They had they had two couples, right? Four people who did the hustle, and then they had you know Pat and Michael, uh, another couple who did salsa, okay. right? So they did shows, right? So they got to see us. They had heard about me and Enoch. So George Vasconi, the the president, came down, watched us dance. He said, "Yo, you guys are pretty awesome." You want to join our group, and forget it, man. You know we, our, our, we thought we were going to go to Hollywood. I'm telling you, we felt like we were that talented wow. that we were going to get discovered and something really nice was going to happen. So the symbolics, they did discover us, and you know some nice things happened. It's just that, so we did several shows with them, right? We went, we did the college circuit. We, I remember doing Cornell, Wagner. There was a couple of other colleges in the city that we did. We did St. John's. Um, and and we did uh, oh man we in the, in the Plaza Plaza Hotel okay right the penthouse wow um, Barry Gordy's birthday party we performed Barry Gordy Motown Barry Gordy Motown Barry wow. Gordy we performed at his at his party so but those gigs that we got it was like three months apart you know it just wasn't getting it yeah you know and I had you know and I wasn't the only one but my mom's you know, was getting on my case, you know, like, what are you going to do? You got to go back to school, you know, all kind of shit. So, uh, and, and I could, I, I imagine that, you know, some of the other brothers, which I haven't even mentioned yet, right? Like Mike Dominguez and Danny uh, and Hector, they were from 90th Street. They were the other brothers who I looked up to, mm-hmm. right? I met them at this club called The Footsteps. So those are Upper West Side brothers? Upper, upper West Side, Manhattan. Yeah, I think Hector was more from Embarrio, but he hung out with the brothers from 90th Street. These dudes were nasty. So after Johnny and Hector, they became top dogs. And you met these gentlemen in the club? Yeah, footsteps. Okay. Footsteps, yeah, 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 yeah. I was still up and coming and still learning the dance, right? I was practicing, and, and I remember just when I thought I, I was going to be one of the best, I'd come out and I'd see Michael and them. I'd say, shit, I got a long way to go because these brothers were really nasty. And they used to win all the contests in the, in the footsteps. Footsteps had contests all the time. All the time. That was the place. And people came from all over just to join those. But the winners were always, so it was Michael and Junior, they were partners, Danny and Hector, and then Anna and Janet used to, used to win a lot of the contests. Rubber Band never really won there. He used to dance with this guy Little. Little was pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Little, in fact, was the only one back then who really did jerks. Nobody else did jerks, but Little did jerks. So being that no one did jerks, what were they doing? Were they primarily... Steps, drops. Oh, there was. I tell you, man. I got like thirty steps that I can. I mean, I mean, I'm talking about specific steps. Mm. All right, that I just put names to because I was talking to Mr. Wiggles one time, and he was like, "Dude, you guys got so many steps. You got to put names to them so people can start recognizing that what you." So the rock dance that we did was a genre. It wasn't just a dance. It was a whole genre. So it was a spectrum. It was a spectrum. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You and, and you know, once I put my, my stuff out, you'll see, you know, the Cypress Groove, the 90th Street um, teardrop, 
um, the Amsterdam grind. I mean, these are all steps, and I named them after the places they came from. Mm -hmm. So the brothers from...